Hi everyone and welcome back. And this weekend we are going to talk about again on the GraphQL. If you are following this playlist, then we have already talked about Yoga GraphQL and we have covered the basic fundamentals on the GraphQL. Uh, in the last video, we did the folder restructuring, we wrote the resolvers and the query and mutation. All these things we were able to bring and we were able to write the mock database and we were writing the GraphQL schema. It's just a quick recap that what we are covering and what we are going to cover in this playlist. So till now we just talked about this particular yoga lady which is yoga GraphQL and we have covered the basic fundamentals even without database we have done all different things like query, mutation, we will talk about subscription. So we are not using database till now we are just playing with the mock JSON uh, object. But yes, we will introduce MongoDB, SQLi, MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL and we are going to use these different ORMs. So you might see different icons, right? This is the type ORM and popular ORM in Node.js, SQLi is another one of the popular ORM, Prisma becoming popular and we are going to work with the GraphQL using Yoga GraphQL and the Apollo GraphQL. These are the two primary library we are going to use in the whole playlist, okay? So I think now uh, the quick recap is done. We can go back and start writing our code. Okay, so in the last video, what we did is we were able to restructure everything like creating a resolver as a new folder, putting all the resolver definitions like mutations, queries inside that, and then creating a separate folder for our mock data, which is a db.js and then GraphQL schema, a separate file. So this is like separation of concern. Each and every file has its own meaning now. This is for database. This is for our yoga graphical JS. Here we are bootstrapping everything. This is our schema file. Okay. So till now we don't have much on the mutation side. We have written the query. We have seen this up and running in the last video that how we are able to test all these query and mutation using the browser, I mean by hitting the HTTP post and we were using this GraphQL uh, add-on. Okay, now in this video, we will go ahead and uh, we'll start talking about more on the mutation side because queries we have done a lot. We have written all these post query, user query. Now we will write mutations which will update the data like what kind of mutation we can write. Create user, update user, delete user, Kind, kind of CRUD operation which we actually do with the database. Currently we don't have a database. This is the only database we have, a mock JSON. Similarly create post, update post, delete post, create comment, update comment, delete comment and all these data is interrelated. It's not like we are doing post independently, user independently. We have linked these entities. So if you try to get the post, you can also get the user who published it. If you try to get the comment, then you can also get the author who published this particular comment. Okay, so this is pretty much now what we will do is uh, we'll go to our mutations and here we will define our mutations. Mutations are like uh, here we can talk about create user, update user, delete user, all these kind of mutations and it's all about based on the payload. So first of all we'll define our schema like what is what should be the input, for the create user, update user and delete user, right? So here we are talking about all different mutations. First we are covering only simple user operation, create user. You are passing create user input, okay? Create user input is another type which is passing all these three parameters. Then we have a delete user, you have to pass the ID to delete a user, update a user where you have to pass the ID and the user input. Similarly, we have three more. Let's say this is for user. Then we can also have something for post. So it will be create post, uh, delete post, and update post. Okay, this is update post this is a delete post okay here what we are going to do is update uh, create post here the input will be the created post input 
and it is going to return as a post so post is a type we already have delete post it is also going to return as the post which we have deleted and the update post it will also return the post okay similarly we can have something for the comment i mean these are like uh, basic operations if you can understand one like user then you can do post you can do comment and you can do anything else so it's like create comment it will take the input created comment input and it will return comment Similarly, delete comment. It is taking ID and it will return comment. Then we have update comment. It is taking create updated uh, comment input. So these are custom types we have defined. You can see custom types we are using here update user input. This should be update post input. So create post input, update post input, create user input. Let's call it as a create user input, update user input. This is create post input, updated post input, create comment input, update comment input. Now we need to define these types also. It's not like we can go ahead just without defining them. So we have create user input and update user input now we have to define four more one can be a create post input which will take title body and published title is string body is string and published is boolean okay and all are required i mean title body and published this is the create then we have the update so in this create everything is required we also have author which is of type id so all are required required in the create then we have update post input you might want to update uh, the basic information but not the author right so update post input like i'm the author and i'm updating it so obviously i will be just updating either title or either body or either published not the author similarly we have two other types which is create comment input and update comment input in the comment what you will add let's change this to create comment input and update comment input now in the create comment input you will have text these all properties will be required because you are writing a comment and there will be author as an id and post on which post you are adding this post id and author id we have two things post id and author id this is the comment and when you want to update it we don't want to change the author and the the post for the comment only the text is something which you can change so these are required this is optional so we have defined all the different types now what we can do is we can go ahead and write these resolvers okay before that user is returning uh, posts and comments post is returning comment and author post and author that is fine Okay, for post, comments can be many, right? Because you can write multiple comments on a single post and comment will have author and post. So we are just adding some additional relationships which are required. So we have post, we have author and for the post we have author and comment and for user we have posts and comments. So this is our user posts and comments and these we have to write a logic how to resolve them like we have put that here user user had posts and comments and this is how your query needs to resolve when you want to return the user object 
Similarly, we have post. In the post, we have author and comment. In the post, we have author and comment. Now, in comment, we have author and post. In the comment, we have author and post. Okay, there is author, but we don't have a post. So, we have to add it. So, post means uh, this is another one. So, what we are doing is we want to get the, the post of the comment. I mean, you can also return the post information on which you have written a comment. So, we can do is db.post post.find and the condition will be post.id okay so it's like parent.post and we can say post.id i.id so if we just go ahead and look at the data for the comments we have author so we also need to have the other information with the comments which is we need to also have the author id so that we can author id is there post id I mean on which particular post you are adding a comment so our post id can be something matching like on the post we have the id 10 and 11 let's put uh, as 11 and here let's put the post 10 okay now we have post and author and we'll go to the comments how to resolve post we just need to find parent.post here we have given the post ID, which is nothing but this ID belongs to the post. Okay, that we are getting from the, the parent. So parent.post equal to i.id. This is fine, right? So this is how we can resolve both the information author and the post for a comment. Post.id equal to parent.id. Okay, so this is this is one thing now what we can do is let's go to our graphql schema we have defined all the mutation but that's not enough we have to go to our resolver and inside resolver we have to define all these mutations so here is our mutations in the mutation currently i mean we are not we haven't covered all these things inside mutation so until we haven't covered them it will so an error so first of all let's list them down what all we wanted to cover these all things we are covering so let's write uh, our mutations like create user update user delete user and all these things so create user means uh, we will get the data and we have already defined the payload for create user is this data where we are going to have a name email age and we are we can access this object through argument object so let's go to our mutation and how we are accessing this from argument dot data because data is the parameter name from there we get the email and first we are checking if this user is already registered with us with the same email then we are going to throw an error otherwise uh, we are going to create a new user and we need to provide a unique id to the user so we can import a uuid from UUID library so this we can do and here we are creating a user it's not like we are still going to store this in the database we will just push it to our uh, mock JSON object and here is our argument dot data this is the user information and then we do have access to users Okay, this is a context right so from context we are going to get the database so we can restructure it directly db and we can say db dot users dot push user is already an array our new user object and once it is done return user simple this is how we are doing create user now update user first we will try to see what is the user index right what is the user id so here in the update what is the payload we will talk about user and then post and comment is kind of same thing here we have the name email and age that is about update 
okay and we also going to have the id because update will happen through the id yes this is there so we have the id and we have the data id means the user id so here we have the update user what we are doing is we are getting id and user from the argument right and then we will just try to find if the user already exists i mean user exists with that id users dot find and we will say if user dot id is same as the id you are passing that means the user exists and we can do the update but if this user is not there that means we can throw an error so new error and that error will be user not found okay now if uh, user uh, i mean we are able to find the user now you are trying to update the user with a new email or something like that so that we can do but again we can check okay the user already exists with the same email or not right that is again a concern that there should be no two users having the same email so email taken we are capturing user dot email right if the email already taken then we can't create with the same user otherwise what we will do is if all these tests are i mean all these cases are passing user dot name is data dot name we don't need a uniqueness on the name user dot email equal to data dot email and we have updated the user and we will just return it okay so because it's the same reference we just updated the properties on to the user and this user will be updated in the database return user now let's say there is a create post create post is also kind of same thing in the create post what all the argument we are passing if you see the, the create post we have author title body and published so we can try to do this create post and update post first let's do it with the create post okay for the create post we are going to uh, first we are going to validate author really exist or not it's like all data validations we are performing okay so argument dot data here we are getting argument data from first of all what is the payload payload is create post input this is the payload so we will have to check okay does this author really exist with this id in our system so we'll do that validation inside this data we have data dot author and we will just check with the id and users dot sum if any one of the the user has the same author id which we are trying to apply for the post that means we have the author really exists right otherwise the author doesn't exist for this new blog post author does not exist i mean these are just the validations we are trying to put now it's a post object we are just passing the id and rest all the payload where you are passing the id uh, i mean body title and the author information and db dot post dot push new post and this return this new post created this is our create post now update post in the update post what we are doing first of all we are trying to uh, get the data here we are getting two things id and data first we will do check first we will check do we have this post with this id exist so we are just checking post dot id equal to the id which you are passing it's like update post by id delete post by id and create post with author id same right so we are just saying okay the post exist if post does not exist we will say post does not exist otherwise we will just update some properties whatever is coming in the pay payload 
you might do add some null checks there it's a create post this should be update post we didn't change the name update post and post exist and then later you can do is simply we can update the properties so this was create post update user something like this so we got the post because this particular post is there so we'll just update the same property so here we can update the post dot title body and all these properties post dot body so in data we have all these properties data dot title data dot published and returned post that's it so it's like plain and simple we are able to do here so similarly we can create a create comment update comment and all uh, let, let's finish this and we will run this uh, in the next video